Shalom, beloved. A word. There are many who, though I speak that which the Most High gives me to speak, they want to judge me because I am a female for speaking the word of the Most High. But what I want to say is these are not my determinations, beloved. They are the determinations of our creator. I was going to share something with you because I do want to share my screen. However, I'm going to wait before I do that and say this. When the Most High said, touch not mine anointed and do my prophet no harm. He was not just speaking to the other nations. He's also speaking to the house of Yasharel. There are many who attack based solely on the fact that I'm a female, telling me I should not prophesy or preach as they call it. But this thing that I do has nothing to do with my decision to speak or to deliver what the Lord puts on me. It has to do with what the most high did. They're telling me I'm a sinner or they just verbally attack. My calling, it did not come by way of a man. It wasn't that somebody told me Deuteronomy 28, although I know Deuteronomy 28. But they seem to have determined, because I am a female, that the most high must not even talk to females. We just sitting on the earth waiting for a man to tell us that the Lord exists. And you're blind because that is not the man in which the Lord works. They quote what Paul said constantly. But I will tell you what the most high did. And it's more than words. He does not operate according to the determinations of people. The Most High does what he does according to his will. I have run from it. I have looked and thought it could not possibly be me. But it is not about the messenger, it's about the message. And it is about the will of the most high. There have been so many times in my life that I decided this is it, this is it. And then the spirit will come. I have had men tell me that being a sinner, the spirit would not come. You might wanna go and talk to the most high because I'm trying to understand how men try to determine whether Yahuwah will speak to a female, to a woman. He's had prophets and prophetesses from the beginning, but they tell me that it's a sin. I would rather be thought a sinner by men than to be defiant unto the Most High. I would rather be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And my sacrifice will be to praise, honor, and glorify the Most High. It's really impossible to resist him. I'm sure many try. I've tried. I don't know if I said it on here before or, or speaking with others. Many times being shocked by how he moved. There is no limit to what Yahuwah can do. I determined one time, and I've been having visitations by the Most High and Angelic since I was little. I, I, a lot of it, I didn't even understand when it began. But I've always loved Yahuwah. Many little children, they have uh, invisible friends. 
Not only did I make Yahuwah my father, he was my friend when I was little and would go and be alone. It was him I would talk to, not little imaginary friends because I knew they weren't real, but I knew he was. And he would show me things that, that I don't even know if there is a human tongue to, to give them description because there's nothing on earth to compare them to. There's nothing to make your mind conceive what he would do. Many people would say you imagined it, you dreamed it. How can you dream something that the earth, the world has never shown you? <clears throat> I can remember determining I was not going to say a word. I wasn't going to because I've had my own family fight against me on it. And literally was on my way to the store to go get weed. Just get high. And on the way, and like I said, I can't remember if I told this or not. And this is one of just multitudes, but this one particular time I had determined I just wasn't saying a word in my heart. I was loving the Lord, but I decided I'm not saying anything. And along the way, I started hearing this music coming from a distance. It was the most beautiful music I had ever heard. Silver and gold, silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. As it grew closer and closer, it saturated the air. It was like the tiny particles of the air became acquire unto itself each teeny piece of the air became a choir of of it was beyond words i remember looking at this brother who's coming up the street and asking him can you hear that music and he knows sister it enwrapped me it swallowed me I was trying, it got to the point I couldn't even make it to the store. I was trying to make it home. And the next thing I know, I end up on the corner speaking and preaching and singing and glorifying the most high. It had nothing to do with, I, I just don't think the spirit took the time to say, hey, you know, the guy said you can't speak, so you can't speak. The spirit is not going to listen to you because you have some chauvinistic ideology of who can speak the word of the most high. He's not going to do it. In the last days, he poured out his spirit on his male and female servant. When did the last days begin? He didn't tell me. The Lord that gives me what he gives me in measure as he determines. There was a time, because many men use this, this thing Paul said, and I'm not going to break that down. I did it before. But there were people who fought against Paul. One of the men of the town came out and said, maybe we should stop. I think you should stop. If it's not of God, it's going to come to nothing. But if it is, of the most high. See, if what I'm doing is not of the most high, it will come to nothing, beloved. But if it is of the most high, you are not fighting against me. You are fighting against Yahuwah, the power of the most high. And I pray you don't get visited by him. I have had people try to do things and because I know what Yahuwah will do, I end up sorry for them, fearing for them. I also fear for myself 
because I know what he will do to a disobedient servant. It doesn't, his sword cuts both ways, beloved. I'm not asking anybody to follow me. If your spirit feels as though that's a woman, I'm not going to listen to her. Let me tell you, the most I said, I will, and a child shall lead them. There are many people who think because they're a man, and I don't disrespect men, but you think because you're a man alone, that qualifies you and disqualifies every female walking the earth. He will make a child lead us. And as far as his word, lest we forget, he said, I will make the rocks cry out to get that word out. But somehow, it seems men may determine the rock is better than his, his female servants. Be careful when you judge his servant because she's a female. You're sinning. And the one that's judging, judge not, beloved, lest you be judged. I am calling this the call. But I wanted to share certain things I know we will have persecution and tribulation in the last days, beloved. I know. I know. I know we will. But just to highlight, okay, just to highlight, this is in the book of Isaiah. This is in the book of Joel, okay? But I'm going to read it from the book of Acts because it seems as though there are certain men, certain Pharisees that determine if the Lord doesn't call you on the telephone personally, that no, female can't speak. And like I said, more than anger, I, I think I end up fearing for you. It's a frightening thing to fall into the hands of the most high. There's nobody can help you. It, there's no one that can help you. They'll need help running even when he's not touching them because of the power that comes. But to share, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This is for those, you might want to go and talk to Yahuwah. Maybe you made a determination that, hey, you can't pour it out on the women. I'm telling you what the Lord's doing, not what you said. They say you can't prophesy. Some of you are hollering, screaming, at me, you can't prophesy. You're sinning. <laughs> and they'll quote Timothy, not even saying the woman should prophesy with a head cover. Now they some make the you just can't. This is for you, beloved. And this shall come to pass in the last day, saith the Lord. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Some men say, well, you need to prophesy to your husband. Some women are married, and I know the Most High knows that. He is not going to stop by your house to get your approval. You need be careful, beloved, when you're speaking to the Most High's servants and telling them not to speak his word. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Well, those visions and those dreams also come to the females, beloved. And he doesn't check with these Pharisees or these men who truly believe they're right. When I thought about it, because there was somewhat of an attack yesterday, beloved. But you see, I also know, blessed are thee when thou art revived. Mm. Blessed are thee. But I want to read this, beloved. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Yasharel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in the seed, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. I want to go back because I have the book beside me, but I wanted to show it. Um, and I know I kept it, but I'm going to move on. And what does that mean? He is sifting out those that are his and those that use his word as a weapon, even amongst Yasharel. They use his word as a weapon. 
speaking for him, but is the spirit of the Lord speaking to you or is it your spirit that's speaking, determining whom the most high can and can't speak to? Beloved, be careful. He's sifting out Yasharel. I'm going to go back to that real quick. For lo, I will command who? Yahuwah. He's the one doing it. And I, Yah, will sift the house of Yasharel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Those whom he will. It's not about my will. Who can determine to command the spirit of the Lord? Or the calling? There's none of us that is without sin. So to make the determination, all women be quiet, beloved, be careful, be careful. You need be careful when you're speaking to the most high servant, particularly trying to teach them to be disobedient to the most high. And at the end of Amos 9, 14 to 15, and I will again bring the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall, also, they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, their land. Yes, beloved, their land, okay? And they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord. There are nations that have taken our land. But you see, the most high is cleansing the land. And I will plant them upon their land. So the most high is going to bring us home. He is increasing his word. He's pouring out his spirit because we are in the last days. But there are people who have determined to try to silence the voice of the Most High, and it shall not silence. And I will plant them upon their land, beloved. Yes, their land. And they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, save the Lord thy God. One of the things I also wanted to bring out, beloved, there was a prophet that the Most High told to go and speak to King Jeroboam, okay? And I'm going to start at 1 Kings, get the chapter right, 1 Kings, verse, chapter 13, starting at the 14th verse. Forgive me, forgive me. First Kings, starting at the fourth verse. When King Jeroboam heard the man of God speaking against the altar at Bethel, he pointed at him and shouted, seize that man. But instantly the king's hand became paralyzed in that position and he couldn't pull it back. At the same time, a wide crack appeared in the altar and the ashes poured out just as the man of Yah had predicted in his message from the Most High. Now, understand this two-edged sword of the Most High. When the Most High tells his prophets to speak, beloved, and to do certain things, it is the power of the Most High moving through them. That's why the king's hand became paralyzed. But even with all that this prophet had done, he also told him in verse eight, but the man of God said to the king, even if you gave me half of everything you own, I would not go with you. I would not eat or drink anything in this place for the Lord who gave it. The Lord gave me this command, beloved. Nobody can command the spirit of the most high. Whether he speaks through a woman, a man, or a child, 
for you to try to tell them to be silent. Take care, beloved. Take care. He's sifting the house of Yasharel. You may want to determine what are your real reasons that you want to elevate. There's no elevation. The only one who deserves to be exalted is the most high. The most high. All praise, not some. All glory. It doesn't matter what messenger he sent. If the most high sent that person, it's not the messenger that gets the praise and the glory, but the one who sent the message, who will bring it to pass, beloved. Mm. But the man of Yah said to the king, even if you gave me half of everything you own, I would not go with you. I won't follow what you want. I would not eat or drink anything in this place for the Lord gave me this command. You must not eat or drink anything while you are there and do not return to Judah by the same way you came. So he left Bethel and went home another way. But here's the interesting and this person, mm, listen to the one who came to him. As it happened, there was an old prophet living in Bethel and his sons came home and told him what the man of God had done in Bethel that day. They also told their father what the man had said to the king. The old prophet asked them, which way did he go? So they showed their father which road the man of Yah had taken. Quick, saddle the donkey, the old man said. So they saddled the donkey for him and he mounted it. Then he rode after the man of Yah and found him sitting under a great tree. The old prophet asked him, are you the man of Yah who came from Judah? Yes, I am, he replied. Then he said to the man of Yah, come home with me and eat some food. No, I cannot, he replied. I am not allowed to eat or drink anything here in this place. For the Lord gave me mm, this command. Now, here two prophets. You must not eat or drink anything while you are there and do not turn to return to Judah by the same way you came. But the old prophet answered, mm, I am a prophet too, just as you are. And an angel gave me this command from the Lord, bring him home with you so he can have something to eat and drink. But the old man was lying to him. So they went back together and the man of God ate and drank at the prophet's home. Then while they were sitting at the table, a command from the Lord came to the old prophet. He cried out to the man of God from Judah. This is what the Lord says. You have defied the word of the Lord and have disobeyed the command. The, Yah, the Lord your God gave you. Beloved, I will not disobey. Let the whole world hate me and the Lord have mercy upon me and receive me home as an obedient servant and forgive my sins as I follow what Yah told me to do, not what some man, flesh and blood said. I'm going to follow and until Yah tells me different, you can yell, you can scream, you can do anything. You can say the Lord told you. It won't matter if his word told me until he himself changes it. I shall not move to the right nor to the left. I'm going straight ahead. All right. Obedience is better than sacrifice for love. Wait a minute now. Mm. All right. Mm. This is what the Lord says. Mm. You have defied the word of the Lord and have disobeyed the command of the Lord your God that the Lord your God gave you. You have come back to this place and ate and drank where he told you not to eat or drink. Because of this, your body will not be buried in the grave of your ancestors. After the man of God had finished eating and drinking, the old prophet saddled his own donkey for him. And the man of Yah started off again. But as he was traveling along, a lion came out and killed him. 
and his body lay there in the road. This is the same prophet who prophesied against the King Jeroboam and his hand paralyzed. Why? Because when the Lord gives a command, the same person he works through, if you disobey, he will visit upon them the same thing he will visit upon the one that the prophet is supposed to speak to. Listen, beloved, if you truly believe that you are called by the most high to go and tell men or women or people or persons not to speak his word or deliver the message that he gives them, speak on. But if it's some determination that you read in a passage in a book lacking the true understanding of what the spirit gives, Take care, beloved, take care that you don't become paralyzed like King Jeroboam when the prophet is telling you only what the Lord said. It's not by my power or my might, it's by his spirit. And I have fear and trembling because I do not know the end of the matter for me. But I know as best I can, I'm going to follow him. And in the last days, it's the last days. I believe some of these men, may, may, the last day seems to be only the men in your mind, but that is against what the word of the Most High said. In the last days, his spirit's pouring out, beloved, to finish, to finish. There's a lot more I have to say, but this has come upon me so strong and I'm supposed to be getting ready to go to work, but the Lord will be done, not my will, his will. And this message is not just about the call or the visions, which are too many to mention. It's also a fair warning, beloved, that when you tell the Most High servants not to speak, are you actually telling the Most High to be quiet and then judging his servant, never knowing that your very words and your very acts may be putting you under judgment. Mm. The last word, beloved, the last word, all right. Fourth Esdra, some people call it second Esdra. This is chapter 16, starting at the 74th verse. Oh, hear, O oh, you, my beloved chosen people, says Yahweh. Behold, the days of tribulation are at hand, and I will deliver you from the same. So be encouraged, beloved. Be you not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahuwah is your guide. That's who's guiding us. Beloved, I am not guided by man. If you speak the word of the Most High, my spirit will automatically react. Okay, do I know scripture from front to back? No, I do not. Can I quote it at the drop of a hat, all of it? No, I cannot. The Lord gives his, his word, his spirit to me in measure. But what he gives, that I speak, that I speak. Wait a minute. And the guide of you who keep my commandments and precepts, says Yahuwah, the almighty. Do not let your sins weigh you down and let not your injustice and iniquities lift up themselves and prevail over you. Don't get caught up in your wrong. We repent and keep going. Woe to them that are bound and choked by their sins and overwhelmed by their injustice and iniquities, just as a field is choked with underbrush and its path overwhelmed with thorns so that no man may travel through. It is left undressed and it is given over to and to be consumed by the fire. Listen, beloved, be not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahuwah is your God. That's my God. That's my God, beloved. It is not my decision. It was Yahuwah's decision. A word. Yes, I was called, beloved, but not by my determination, but by the Most High's. Unless he say something else, just like the king, the, the prophet that went to King Jeroboam, I'm going to go the way he said. And if he change it, I'll change. But if you don't like the fact that a female speaking, take it up with the Lord. Tell him about how, what you feel about his servant. But take care, beloved. Take care. 
ye shall have persecution. It's a word, beloved. It's a word. Take care. Take care. And just like that prophet whom the Lord sent to speak to King Jeroboam, his sword cuts both ways. And it's a fearful and terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the Most High. It's a word, beloved. He is in the midst of us and he is here. He will not stop. He is visiting the nations just like he said. And he is also sifting the house of Yasharim. Be encouraged, beloved. Be encouraged. The Most High is among us. A word, shalom.